In this video, I'm going to introduce you to an idea called physicalism and give you one of the best arguments against it. Now, physicalism is the idea that everything boils down to physics. Everything boils down to quarks and leptons bumping into each other. Now, as a theist, I reject physicalism. I believe that there's more to the world than just quarks and leptons bumping into each other. I believe there's God and souls and angels and so on. So I believe that physicalism is false. What I'm going to do today is give you one of the best arguments that's been given in recent years to try and argue that physicalism is not the right way of looking at things. First of all, I wanna talk a little bit more in detail about precisely what it is that physicalism claims. As I said, physicalism says that all there is is physical particles. When it comes down to it, you could take the most massive mountain, you could take the most complex biological being, like a human being, but eventually, when you broke it down to the bits and pieces that made it up, you wouldn't find anything immaterial there. All you'd find were the little physical particles that made it up. Here's one way of understanding physicalism. Imagine a character. Fictional character, true, but maybe a helpful character to think about. We'll call this character a super physicist. Who's a super physicist? Well, a super physicist is someone who knows everything there is to know about physics. They know where every single particle in the universe is, and they also know all the laws governing those particles. They know exactly which way the particles will move, what will happen when they bump into each other, and so on and so forth. Now, if physicalism is true, and if at basis of reality, all that reality is are quarks and leptons bumping into each other or doing the things that quarks and leptons do, well, then the super physicist literally knows everything there is to know. Why? Well, we've just imagined this character that knows all there is to know about physics, but if physicalism is true, well, that's all there is to know. That's then what physicalism claims. It says that at basis, what reality really is are little bits and particles, quarks and leptons, whatever it is that's at the most basic level of reality, and that's all there is. The rest, as we could say, is just details. It's just complicating arrangements of those bits and particles at the basis of reality. So that's the outlook that the physicalist has. As I said, as a theist, I reject physicalism. I believe that there are immaterial things that exist in the world as well, and therefore that physicalism is false. What I want to do today, though, is to give you one specific argument for why physicalism is false. It's not my own. It's due to a philosopher named Frank Jackson, who published it in a paper, a very famous paper that you can look up if you want to, called What Mary Didn't Know. And here's how the argument runs. First, imagine a character. We'll call her Mary. And Mary has several important features. First of all, Mary is a super physicist. She knows everything there is to know about all the physical facts. She knows about all the um, protons and leptons and quarks and um, all of those things. She knows all of it. Number two, Mary, while she knows all the physical facts in the world, she also has never seen the color red. Well, how could that be, you might ask? Here's one way to imagine it. Suppose that Mary has been raised her entire life in a completely black and white room. Her entire environment has been only in black and white. All of these physical facts she's been so busy learning, she's learned completely through black and white textbooks. You could maybe imagine that she's even more sort of like color eliminating goggles. So even when she looks at her own body and anything else in her environment, all she's able to see is black and white. So two things so far. Mary is a super physicist. She knows all the physical facts there are to know. Second thing about Mary, she has never seen the color red. But here's the third thing about Mary. One day, someone comes into this room where Mary's been, this completely black and white environment, and opens the door and has Mary take off these color eliminating goggles and walks her outside and shows her for the first time in her life a bright red apple. Now most of us would think that what Mary's reaction is when she sees this bright red apple is, oh, that's what it's like to see the color red. This is an experience that I've never had before. 
In fact, I have learned something new. I have learned what it's like to see the color red. Now, if that's your reaction, and that's a lot of people's reactions, this shows something actually really crucial. Why? Well, back up a minute. We just supposed that Mary knew all the physical facts there were to know. She knew all about the quarks. She knew all about the leptons. She knew all about the laws governing the quarks and leptons. Work it up a notch, right? If she knew all of that, she knew all about what was going on in someone's brain when they saw the color red. She knew exactly what happened with their neurotransmitters. She knew exactly what happened in their, in their, um, in their cortex and in the areas of her brain responsible for visual processing. She knew all that. What didn't she know? She didn't know what it was like to see the color red. What does this show? Well, it shows that even if you know all the physical things there are to know, even if you know all the physical facts, you don't know everything. You don't know all the facts. Mary knew all the physical facts, but didn't know what it was like to see the color red. Now, if the color example isn't doing it for you or is you know, maybe not as exciting, you could imagine any sensation that you wanted to, as long as you make it true that Mary knows all the physical facts and she's never experienced that before. So suppose Mary knows all there is to know physically about what happens when someone hears something, right? So she knows all what's going on at the chemical level, at the neurological level, at the biological level, at the, at the brutally physical level, what's going on with the, the um, physical stuff that makes up the sensation of hearing something. So Mary knows all of that. But suppose she's never heard Beethoven. What happens when she hears Beethoven? Well, it seems like she responds, ah, that's what it's like to hear Beethoven. We have the same kind of argument again. Mary knew all the physical facts that went into hearing, but she didn't actually know what it was like to experience hearing Beethoven. Or take taste. Suppose Mary knows everything that goes on physically when you eat a creme brulee, but has never actually eaten a creme brulee. What happens when Mary eats a creme brulee for the first time? Well, a lot of us would think her reaction is, oh, I never knew that's what a creme brulee tasted like. That's delicious. What does that show? Well, once again, Mary can know all the physical facts there are to know without knowing what the experience itself is like. So what does this show? Well, it shows, quite simply, that physicalism must be false. Why? If physicalism was true, then as soon as Mary knew all there was to know physically, well, she would be the equivalent of the super physicist and she would know all there is to know. If you're a physicalist, after all, you think that all there is to know about tasting a creme brulee or hearing a piece of Beethoven or seeing a bright red apple is the physical story. But Mary's case suggests that you can know all of that and not know about the experience itself. Mary suggests then that there's something more to the world than merely the physical story. That there are more facts out there to know than merely the physical facts. And if that's true, then physicalism, which says that all there is is physical stuff, must be false. That then is one of the best arguments in the last several decades that's been leveled against physicalism and in fact has convinced many philosophers, both theistic and non-theistic, that there's something deeply wrong with the physicalist position. So where do we go from here? Well, there's two directions you could go. One direction is to try and say that there must be two parts to the world, or at least two parts. First of all, there's the physical aspect of reality. And second, there's conscious experience, right? Mary knows the physical side of seeing red, of hearing Beethoven, of tasting a creme brulee, but doesn't know the experiential side of reality. So one way you could take the argument that Mary suggests to us is that there's not only a physical side to the world, but there's also a experiential side to the world. That's the way, in fact, many philosophers have taken what Mary shows to show them. But I want to suggest that Mary shows something slightly different. Here's what I want to suggest. 
For any of you who have ever watched many horror movies or thrillers or even sort of movies with a twist at the end, you'll know that all, what, what often happens about three quarters of the way through one of those movies is something will happen that kind of breaks a facade. Maybe it's not even three quarters of the way through. Maybe it's only half the way through, but something happens. And when that happens, the main character or you as the viewer realizes that things are not the way they seem. Think about a movie like The Truman Show, right? Where if you haven't seen it, that's okay. But Truman, it sort of looks like this main character Truman is living in a real world, but all of a sudden realizes that he's not in the real world. He's in fact on a reality TV show that's been being filmed since the day he was born. And everyone in his life are in fact characters employed by this TV show. Something like that, right? There's, there's all kinds of movies where Sometime into the movie, you realize that things aren't in fact how they seem, that what you thought was the right way of thinking about the world in the context of that movie is in fact completely wrong. And that's what I want to suggest Mary suggests to us, is that Mary kind of suggests that this way that I think a lot of us are tempted to think about the world, that what the world is is just a bunch of particles bumping into each other, that Mary presents us not so much with a moment that suggests there's both the physical stuff and the experiential stuff, and we have to think about both of them. Rather, what Mary does is offer us the equivalent of that moment in a movie in which we realize that our assumed outlook, what we thought reality to be like, is in fact deeply flawed. I think Mary does that for physicalism. She suggests that while we thought, maybe, or we have a tendency to think that all reality is are these physical particles bumping into each other. That's what the physicalist thinks. That in fact, there's something deeply flawed with that outlook on reality. And that for those of us who are assuming that that's an accurate way to think about reality, that all there is is bits and particles and that's it, that Mary should wake us up into realizing that what we had assumed was the right outlook is in fact a deeply flawed outlook on reality. What's the right outlook on reality? Well, I believe it's a theistic one. One that believes that what's the basis of reality are not quarks and leptons bumping into each other, but rather the creator, God, that that's the way of orienting ourselves to what's really real. I'm not though going to get into that today. Rather, what I wanted to offer you was an argument, and I think a strong argument, against physicalism, along with some thoughts about what that argument ultimately shows.